unsolved crimes newspaper as a response to Cavalier civil society organization within the framework of a struggle against religious extremism presents. What I say is most people uh, still want to remain within the classical mm -hmm. religion and to have new ways of living the classical religion. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is a huge uh, phenomenon. So most people are not, uh, don't feel betrayed. They want to remain, but they want to invent something new, to, to, to live their old faith in new ways. But then some people do feel betrayed and they want to go uh, outside. Massimo Introvigne, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor of Sociology of Religion, Founder and Managing Director of the Center for Studies on New Religions. A great specialist in the field of sociology of religion. He is an advisor of leading governmental and non-governmental institutions as well as a number of specialized organizations in Europe and the United States. Well, new religions appear continuously in the history of humanity. Of course, when Christianity appeared, it was a new religion. When Islam appeared, it was a new religion. Obviously enough, when gods change, the authority also changes. When there is a need to change the leading authority, new government comes and it appoints gods, making previous ones mere demons. In other words, one used to serve certain gods, later he served other ones. Oleg Maltsev Applied Scientist, Director of the Scientific Research Institute, the International Faith Analysis Community, Head of the Expeditionary Force, Lawyer and a Businessman. An official meeting of two scientists, Massimo Introvigne and Oleg Maltsev, took place in June of 2016 in the Business and Culture Center of Northern Italy. It took place at the Center for Studies on New Religions, founder and director of which is Professor in Trovinia. Here downstairs we have a library with 60,000 books on religious stories downstairs. Quite a huge It's the largest library of new religious movements in the world. He knows exactly where and which book in this library. I saw it in my own eyes. Incredible. In my view, Dr. Massimo Introvigne is a great professional in the new religious movements, field and in the sociology of religion. Highly competent specialist. I would say probably he is the one of the most competent experts I have ever seen. He is greatly knowledgeable in what he is doing. In nowadays it is quite rare to see one who knows what he is doing. Usually people superficially are aware of what they are doing and they do not go really deep into details. It should be noted that the official meeting of the two scientists in Turin was held on the initiative of Dr. Massimo Introvigne, who has unquestioned reputation in academic circles in the sphere of the sociology of religion. It goes without saying that the only distinctive people are honored to have a personal meeting on the cabinet. There are even fewer people who are personally invited by Professor Introvigne. One of the main topics of the official meeting was new religious movements and reason of why people leave traditional religions. Some people would speak of post-modernity now, and modernity had a very strong criticism of the traditional religion. Uh, actually, this criticism didn't lead a lot of people to become atheists. Atheists are a minority. In the European Union they are 9%, so a significant minority, but not uh, 
very far away from becoming the majority. Why would one search for something better? Reason is that he is not satisfied with what he has now. Obvious enough. Let's say you don't like your dress, you just go to a store and buy a new one. Meaning that obviously nowadays generally accepted religions do not longer satisfy congregation. Some people try to stay in the old religion and invent something new inside the old religions, and some people were attracted by new religions. And this is in a way a modern phenomenon. The starting point is the strong criticism, enlightenment and the modernity proposed against traditional religion. Who is to blame? There is a huge variety of reasons starting from incompetency of clerics to baptization at birth. That is, a person is born into a religion. It does not comply with all of the norms of international law and human rights convention and so on. Europe has started seriously looking into this problem. That an individual should be choosing a religion to believe in when he reaches he is grown up and conscious at the age of least 14-16. But when you take into consideration current level of degradation in society, even at this age one can be hardly called an adult. Obviously, if there is a demand, sooner or later a proposition will have a place. If the traditional religions do not satisfy people, new religions will appear. So, religious uh, creativity is continuously a work in, uh, in human history, but it's true that in certain periods it seems to be more uh, at work than in other periods of uh, history. One of these periods uh, was uh, in the great transformation of Western society after the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution. And that's the time when the Mormons or uh, the Seventh-day Adventists or the Jehovah's Witnesses, all large groups were born. And another moment uh, is the, uh, the time after World War II, after World War II, People reflected on what caused the war, why this terrible war was caused, uh, and so there, were new, there was a new interest in spirituality, and that generated many new religious movements, uh, including the most famous, or perhaps uh, infamous, depending from the point of view, in the 1950s. After World War II, uh, the Unification Church was born of uh, Reverend Moon. Church of Scientology was born in 1954. Uh, in 1960 or around 1960, the, the Hare Krishna, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So that was another moment of uh, uh, explosion uh, of new religious movements. To be clear, 200-300 years ago, there were numerous ways of understanding different things. For instance, Catholic Church still exists today. It is believed to be Catholic Christianity. I have just arrived from a research expedition. I would say that with the same success the Rosicrucian Christianity and the Templier Knights Christianity still exist throughout Western Europe. And there is a huge number of adherents of Rosicrucian Christianity, Templier Christianity, this teaching the Reformation, in other words, in the Lutheran Church. As you can imagine, the enemy of Catholic Church 30 years of war. Pay attention that there are numerous Christian movements found even in Europe. 
And so new religions is simply a big new religious movement. For smaller groups we use new religious movements, for larger groups we use new religions. In order to understand the difference of new religious movements from traditional and new religions, let's take a look at classification of new religious movements. One classification uh, I like uh, uh, is about doctrine. So the first group is group of Christian origins, which go very far away from the traditional Christian theology but still maintain a Christian set of images and references that will be, for instance, the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons or even the Unification Church of Reverend Moon. Of course, they believe Reverend Moon is the second Messiah, but the third Messiah is Jesus Christ. So, and their official initial name was Association for the Unification of World Christianity. So they still maintain a Christian set of references, although their theology is completely different from traditional Christian theology. It may not be a sheer academic view, excuse me my colleagues, I'm not a theologian, but an applied scientist, and I look into different matters as applied history and other fields. Having conducted a research on religious teachings, I can say that there are three types of their origin now. First, archetypological nature of the occurrence of certain beliefs. It means that some ancient belief rises up from the deeps of the history into 21st century. That is, such religious denominations or new religious movements actually are not new ones. They are very old religious movements that existed long before today's traditional religions. Group number two is groups with a set of Eastern uh, images coming from Hinduism or Buddhism. And here we have two movements. One movement is uh, groups born within Hinduism and Buddhism in the East and with the facilitation of travels and later the Internet they move, they send missionaries uh, from the East to the West. That's the Hare Krishna, the new religions of Japan, uh, Sokka Gakkai. And the second movement in this second group is people born in the West who read books about the religions of the East and create new syncretistic movement like the Theosophical Society, but in the Russian area there is, a, for, of course, Agni Yoga of the painter Nicholas Rurik yeah. uh, and his wife Yelena Rurik. Uh, they were Russian, they were not uh, Indians uh, or, or, or Tibetans, but uh, by reading books about, they were fascinated by this religion, so they created a new synthesis. The second nature is foolishness. Today we can see a large number of new religious movements which have arisen as a result of the fact that a person came up with an idea which has no scientific basis whatsoever. Moreover, the person is not even ready to even speak on this topic. He has just gathered a number of people around him and here we have a new religious movement. All of these type of movements are not paradoxical, they are absurd. Just imagine, a religion of the ninth son of God sitting on 32nd planet located in 200 light years from the Earth. It's something like that. No, 
But if these people are not an organized criminal group, they do not trespass the law, they officially exist as a religious community, then I do not understand who can dare to violate the Constitution and encroach upon the freedom of belief and the freedom of conscience. Group number three is religions completely invented in the West by people who say the old religions are old, let's invent something completely new. Of course, nothing is completely new, we still use material from old ideas. And the typical example will be the Church of Scientology. Church of Scientology is something new, of course it uses material from Eastern religions, from uh, uh, Gnosticism, but it's something really, really new. Because the idea is the old religions are old, we live in the modern world, we need something completely new. That's the third group. Third type of origin is a public or socio-esoteric project. Some time ago, Osho would be considered of this type of a project. Today it is Lightman's Kabbalah and others. These systems are prepared, constructed and assembled by specialists beforehand that solve wide range of tasks on market. If we look at which exactly, they range from wealth gathering to control of methods, turning it into political parties, later into political movements, winning in elections and so forth. There is a huge number of tasks that can be carried out by social esoteric projects. You may ask, who came up with social esoteric projects? Probably by ones who needed them. World's first socio-esoteric project was Sigmund Freud's teaching. Who constructed his teachings? Search the Internet and try to answer this question for yourself. There was a person who didn't come up with socio-esoteric projects, but he was the first who introduced this concept. He was scientist known to us, but I rather not disclose his name to prevent rumor talks. He is our countryman, general, lieutenant, however his name will remain unknown in this interview. And the fourth group is what I will call, uh, uh, I called in fact, uh, new magical movements. Uh, esotericism or magic, of course, has existed for 2000 years, but normally it was an individual experience. And then in the 20th century it became a collective experience with groups like the Amorc, the biggest uh, Rosicrucian groups, uh, and other groups which were structured like new religious movements, but in fact the experience they transmitted was not so much religion but was esoteric. So Christian narratives, Eastern narratives, completely new invented narratives and esoteric narratives. I think these four groups uh, are, offer a, a classification of new religious movements. It's obvious, if there is a new term as new religious movements, it means that there were certain reasons for its occurrence. When and why did the concept of new religious movement appear? Well, the term uh, new religious, uh, I think first came new religious movements and then new religions. New religious movements is actually an older term than uh, new religions. 
Uh, new religious movements is a third coined by a British sociologist called Eileen Barker, a good, Eileen fr Barker. A good friend mm -hmm. of mine, mm -hmm. and she coined this term in the 1970s uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a, an alternative to cults uh, mm -hmm. uh, in English of sect in French, German, uh, Italian and Spanish. New religious are all traditional religions, NRM. It is clear that over the last 100 years the number of players on religious market has increased significantly. So the competition has intensified and so did the need in market regulators. Among the striking examples of artificially created mechanism we should mention the use of the term cult in a new sense. The term itself has existed for a long time. However, in the 20th century it was given a negative sense and the introduction of this type was beneficial for certain structures. Greek sociologists like Max Weber and Ernst Troelsch in a very neutral term, they defined a cult, English or secte, German, as a group whose members are not born in the group. They have converted into the group and so there are certain features. For Max Weber the typical example of a cult or a secte was Jesus Christ and the Apostles because of course none of the Apostles were born Christian, they were born Jews. So they were all first generation converts. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to Max Weber after a few generations uh, uh, a, a cult, Zekte, becomes a church because the majority of the members are now born in the group. They are not converted. So the term was very neutral, used for Jesus Christ. So it was not uh, uh, aggressive or derogatory or negative in any way. Everything starts with the title, in an understanding of a human being. I mean human understands in a way in which the image gets correlate with its name. For example, if I say a rabbit, you immediately imagine an image of a rabbit. So if there is a movement that is not clear, then be sure that somebody will come up with a title for it in order to make it understandable, not matter how good or bad the title is. For example, such a scoundrel like Dworkin and his followers, religious extremists, came up with the title of Destructive Totalitarian Cult. They invited this label because it is an American type of logic. It is the way Americans teach their students at colleges and universities. There is a notion of it is quite obvious. So it is, should be quite obvious for everybody that things are that way. That's it. So they invent a name, label and then say it's quite obvious and I do not understand why you don't see it. Everybody sees it, but you don't. And so sociologists were confronted with an ambiguity of the term because if they say, according to Max Weber, that Jesus Christ and the Apostles were cult or a sect, people understood they were criminals because of the popularity in the media of the criminological use of the term. So, of course, criminologists have their terminology and they keep using the cult or a sect, but sociologists were afraid if, if they kept using Zekte or cult in the meaning of Weber and Trölsch, the general public would understand they were accusing groups of being criminal. So they needed a neutral term, value-free, and Eileen Parker proposed new religious movements, which was very much accepted. As a lawyer, I can say that in fact a word cult is a nonsense, because the concept of new religious movements or cult, you may even call it in a different way, but it is not judicial. As there is no such a thing in the law, in jurisprudence, this phenomenon is fictitious.
accordingly if it mattered for a society, for instance, of France and Spain. They have institutionalized legal acts which regulate activities of new religious movements. However, laws are made in a way that they are not applicable, as constitution states about the freedom of conscience and religious freedom. For this reason, it is not possible to make the statute in a different way. Why do we need a law which is not applicable? This question remains open. So, the term cult or sect is not a judicial concept. I am sure, if it was a crucial issue, society would have come to an agreement in the legal sense long ago. However, there are organizations that operate to the benefit of certain structures and try to reallocate the market in order to eliminate undesirable persons or organizations. They do it by labeling as a sect or a cult. These organizations call themselves anti-cult ones. It is important to understand that steps described above are only one of the manifestations of the religious extremism. But the anti-cult is looking for new cults. They need cults because cults keeping them in business. If they are no cult, they shut down, they no longer receive money and their personnel is jobless. So they started, for instance, in France, they went to the government and said perhaps there are no longer big cults, but there are a lot of cults, cults in the field of alternative medicines. And so they started going after psychological groups, economic groups, philosophical groups, psychotherapy groups, like you, which have nothing to do with religion. And so they need to discover new cults. Because without the new cults, they will be closed down. Yeah. Parents will not give money, governments will not give money, churches will not give money, and they have a lot of personal. As I said, they do not have another job, so they will uh, be desperate.